Um, we're also joined this evening by several city councilors. I see um, Joe McGivern at the moment, and forgive me if I'm not seeing anyone else. I thought, yeah, that's it at the moment. Um, to, to the uh, ordinance committee members and city councilors, I just want to note that our administrative assistant to the city council, Jeffrey Anderson Burgos, did um, create a Google Drive that has all of the um, orders that were filed for the agenda for this meeting, as well as any supporting documents that were submitted from, for example, One Holyoke. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that link that was shared for access to the Google Drive um, was, um, it landed in my spam. I'm sure it landed in the spam of other um, counselors, um, but the, it has been resent, so you can access all those materials um, through Google Drive um, at any point uh, that you like. And um, additionally, we do have PowerPoint presentation from uh, Michael Moriarty for the One Holyoke items, and then Marcus Marrero is also prepared with a PowerPoint um, when we get to the marijuana item. So um, I think all the information that's in the, the folders will be shared um, publicly um, through the course of the meeting, and I just wanted to make everyone aware of that. Councillor Lacey, um, the, I also have a Google Drive and I have some zoning maps that may or may not be needed that you may not have in your drive. I have zoning comparison. So um, just at some point may or may not need um, screen sharing access. Sure, and I think you have that through um, co-host um, status now. Okay. Uh, all right, so our... Um, our meeting is in order. Um, Council, uh, Mr. Kelly, do you want to call to order the planning board meeting? Will do, yep. If I have a motion to open up a public hearing, join public hearing with the planning board and the city ordinance committee for a zone change from BL to DR for 125 Sargent Street, One Hope Development Community Corporation, Mike Moriarty on behalf of the municipal petitioner, and waive reading of the public hearing notice. Um, so moved. Second. second. And are we hearing both the properties and the zone changes for One Holyoke together? Um, I think they're separate um, spaces, so maybe yeah. it, it makes sense to just keep them uh, separate conversations. Okay. I think they kind of work together, though. Do, do you it, think it, that they work together? I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure it's a plan that kind of goes for both properties. If I, I, I could be wrong, but I, based on what I've known, I, I'm pretty sure it's, it's working together. Yeah, if I may speak to that. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, these are two adjacent properties. And the reason I filed them as two separate filings is simply for clarity's sake uh, to make sure there's a paper record for each parcel and block uh, that's affected. Sure, okay. So same sort of project, single discussion, okay. So we'll uh, then I'll also open up public hearing for a uh, zone change from BL to DR for 414 Maple Street, one Hoyt Development Corporation, uh, one Hoyt Development Community Corporation is petitioner, so I need a, a first on those two motions and then a second. So moved. Second on that? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, so um, for the uh, ordinance committee, I'd like to entertain a motion to suspend our necessary rules and take up as a package items number one and two. So All moved. Seen that motion. motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, items one and two are both public hearings from One Holyoke Development Corporation. Item number one relates to a zone change petition from BL to DR for 125 Sargent Street. And item number two is a zone change petition from BL to DR for 414 Maple Street. All in favor for taking these two up together? Aye. Aye, Aye. so moved. Um, okay, so under discussion, I think um, we should hear from the petitioner. <laughs> So yes. um, at this point in time, Mr. Moriarty, if you want to um, give us a bit of an overview and then also um, sh screen share any documents and narrative, um, that would be great. Uh, sure, and, and thank you very much. So uh, the reason that a request has been made for these two parcels is that uh, we at One Hoyoke own a 10 unit block that's on the corner of Maple and Sargent Street that is, uh, zoned business highway. It runs um, from that corner and along a um, alleyway, which I will show in a moment, uh, into kind of a flag line. Immediately next to that, uh, a long time ago, 
we purchased a property and demolished um, a, a structure that was on there at 414 Maple Street. Uh, that is now simply an enclosed grassed area uh, that is of no particular use or value to our organization, uh, has no real uh, utility as a developable lot. It just doesn't have the frontage on Maple Street where we could do anything that we really want to do with it. Um, but our next door neighbor uh, and the owner of uh, uh, Garcia Properties LLC is uh, present on the call, uh, Marcos Garcia, who's the prospective uh, purchaser, uh, does have a use for it because by expanding the lot next to the three family home that he currently owns at 412 and a half Maple Street, uh, he would be able to uh, uh, improve his grounds, improve uh, amenities and off street parking availability uh, for his uh, tenants. So uh, it seemed like a mutually beneficial uh, thing. Uh, however, uh, his property is uh, zoned downtown residential. And at this point, uh, I, I would pull up uh, a zoning map so I can kind of walk you through uh, what's happening in the um, in that immediate area. Um, I think this is the right one. I may have to take it back down quickly if I, and it is not. So we'll stop that share and try again. For future reference, don't have too much stuff open when you're trying to share something in a public meeting. Um, yeah. Mike, seen. are you just trying to look at the zones? Because I do have a zoning map up with the budding zone. Do, do, do you have the block? That'd be perfect. Yeah, so if you'd like to go ahead and do that, I'll, I'll work from that rather than my own share. How does that work for you? Um, actually, it's, it, it's not great. That is shaded so it's very difficult to see the um, the individual parcels, which which I think tell the tale a bit more clearly. I think um, the application has it probably. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm sure it does. And uh, oh, God, well, but... you know, actually, it's got uh, it shows the abutting map in a circle because it was used to uh, access the abutters. Um, let me give, uh, Sharon, let me take one more stab at this, please. Yeah. Um, this is good. Yeah, this is the right place. Okay. So uh, here, here's what I want you to see. So highlighted in blue is the 125 through 127 Sergeant Street parcel I discussed with you. And I described it as a flag lot because what, what you see here. This is the corner of Maple and Sargent Street. The entire block runs between Sargent and Hampshire, Maple and High Street. And the properties in question run along Maple Street and along an alleyway uh, that separates this block. Uh, almost everything on the High Street side of the block is the Williams Auto property. Uh, so we are uh, here a business highway uh, which is not important for us. It's a multifamily residential. Uh, it will not be anything but that again. If anything happened to this property, it would undoubtedly be redesignated by us for some future, uh, probably less dense housing use. Uh, so uh, that zone just really does not have a lot of uh, uh, importance to us. But what does matter is that we want to cut off most of that flag area and sell it to Mr. Garcia, along with uh, lot number 1006. That's the other property that's currently business uh, highway. Uh, and as you can see, it's it's simply a patch of grass and not even a developable one. Uh, so, uh, you know, what we want to do is sell that to Mr. Garcia. We want to, uh, he's going to hire an engineer to draw uh, a, a, an ANR map so that we can cut off a piece of that flag lot so he don't own more um, of the uh, space at the uh, edge of this alleyway. Uh, that would allow him to make use of the property for uh, more off street parking and uh, you know better space for uh, a trash pickup and, and so forth. We're retaining enough to make sure we've got a space for the dumpster that we have back there. 
uh, for trash pickup. So you know, we've, we've surveyed it and everything works. Uh, and so obviously you can't have a split use so that he would be uh, in, in a somewhat challenging position if he wants to consolidate his properties uh, if, if these were left uh, business highway and, and business highway for everything that's going on here in the real world just doesn't matter to us and, and would be actually detrimental to him. But I'd also point out that along all of the properties facing uh, Maple Street, all the way down this block, uh, it is currently uh, downtown residential. So the other thing we think that is helpful is that this would mean everything running from Maple and Sargent all the way back to the last property that faces Maple Street would then share the same zoning, which I, I think that sort of consolidation uh, is often a goal. Uh, the last property uh, at Maple and Hampshire faces Hampshire Street. That is an automobile business. Uh, therefore, that would be the one exception that is business highway. Uh, but I, I think, uh, you know, just, just the point is made that uh, in the area between this uh, alleyway and this uh, and Maple Street, everything that is in fact residential uh, would then become downtown residential. It would facilitate Mr. Garcia's future use of the property and it would make uh, no difference to us for the properties we currently own, which again are, are used exclusively for residential purposes in keeping with the mission of our organization. So uh, given that, um, I, I simply respectfully request that the uh, uh, proposal for each property be allowed by your boards. Okay. Um, so let's see, are there any questions from committee members? Chair Lisi, it's yep. Linda Vacan. Yes, Councillor Vacan. Um, on the agenda, I would just note that it's listed as BL to DR, not BH. Uh -huh. And let me see if I can find the application myself. For what it's worth, the properties are zoned BL. Parcel okay. five and parcel six are both zoned BL. I apologize. I've just been repeatedly uh, misspeaking, um, saying highway instead of limited. I oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very easy to do. So I am having trouble looking at everybody all of a sudden because. Of Would you like me to stop today. sharing? Yes, thank yeah. you. <laughs> there you are. Thank you. Okay. So here we, are. here we go. So um are there questions from committee members? I see Councillor Murphy has a hand up. Um you could go ahead, Councillor Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is not a question. This is an endorsement of the process. I have met with uh Mr. Garcia and, and his property. I've I've looked, I've been in the alley. It was an alley that we were trying to work on cleaning up for Williams Auto, and I know uh, the potential uh, with one Hoyo getting this transfer to uh, Mr. Garcia could do something to make alleyway improvements, uh, which would improve the quality of life and for both the businesses and for the residents there. Uh, I, I think it's a home run, uh, both for one Hoyo and for Mr. Garcia and for the neighborhood. So I'm just, as ward counselor, I'm just endorsing it. I think it, it makes sense. I think it's, uh, uh, a good negotiation that they've had to try to find a way to do better things. And I think this is a great way to do it and I just want to endorse it. So I thank uh, Mike and I thank uh, Marcos for putting this together and uh, hopefully the uh, both committees can pass it and endorse it and we can move forward. Thank you. I just thank want you. to concur with, I would concur with Councillor uh, Murphy has said and also um, I think for any, if you get additional off street parking, it's a plus there too because it's awfully congested. So, in addition, any additional parking spaces you can uh, get around that neighborhood will be, uh, will be a plus too. Yeah, and you know, DR just seems like the right zone for that area. Uh, yeah. Things change, and it's good to have this opportunity to bring the zone <laughs> conformance with you know what it ought to have been. Right, and I think that that has been um, a sort of implicit goal of um, our planning and economic development office that we're we're starting to bring more um, continuous zoning, especially uh, residential zoning, into the downtown area. Um, one question I have, uh, Mr. Moriarty, 
So lot number 005 is somewhat L-shaped right. and hugs um, 006. And it seemed like there was a structure in the back there. And <laughs> I was wondering if you could say what is that structure presently? Yeah, it's it's a concrete retaining wall. Uh, you know, this property is on uh, something of a slope. And um, there's also a concrete pad, and that's where the dumpster uh, sits. Uh, other than that, it's it's kind of a gravelly. Not I wouldn't go so far as to describe uh, the space where some cars can stop in front of that retaining wall. Now is paved, but uh, you know, just kind of a gravel spot. Okay, um, so there's nothing. There's no like raised uh, structure there. It's 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 just a concrete pad and and retaining wall, and they they would likely stay intact in the transfer or or. I would defer to uh, Marcos on that. I think he may need to do uh, some grading and some widening at a portion of that wall in order to have a, enough of a driveway for cars to access uh, some of the area behind his building. Thank you. Um, so if I may ask, um, let's, um, let's take a motion to allow the public to speak. Um, on this matter for for uh, both the committees, if you don't mind. So moved. So for ordinance, all in favor of uh, allowing the public to speak on, on this issue? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Planning, all set, all in favor of public issue? Speak. Yes, seems Aye. good. So moved. Okay, so um, uh, allowing the public to speak, can we hear from uh, Mr. Garcia about um, if, if there's a sense of what's going to happen with the retaining wall and pad in that area. Sure, hi, uh, this is Marcos Garcia, can you hear me? Yes, yep. we can. Okay, great. Um, yeah, there used to be a, uh, a garage there uh, maybe 30, 40 years ago or so, and that's why it still shows up on the uh, maps in that fashion. Uh, currently, there's a partial retaining wall, and I say partial because some of it is crumbling, some of it is missing and the concrete pad that's there is in pretty rough shape. Um, some of it has deteriorated because the uh, dumpster truck uh, kind of rides on it sideways when they're picking up the trash. Mm -hmm. um, the idea um, is to really figure out a way and improve that by either removing the concrete that's there or putting in a new surface and uh, creating a concrete pad that's more suitable for the dumpster and easier for the um, truck as it goes in or backs in uh, to do its uh, weekly uh, uh, take. That's the uh, that's the plan, really. Great, thanks for that. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, I do see Councillor Anderson Burgos's hand up. Juan, do you want to speak? I do. Um, I overheard. Well, one second. I overheard something regarding the the um, alleyway. Um, what through the chair? Can I ask Marcos what the what the plans were for the alleyway and um, what kind of improvements he had for that? Well, as you all know, um, the alleyway, um, or maybe you don't know, but the alleyway is a um, is a somewhat of a nuisance with, um, with some of the uh, the crowd that. Uh, that kind of hangs out in that particular area. Um, part of it has to do um, with the traffic that's flowing from Hampshire Street over to Sargent Street. And that's part of cleaning this up is to have better lighting, um, uh, getting more of my tenants and people in the surrounding area to use the parking there as opposed to um, the issue that, that we're currently facing, which is uh, somewhat of a, um, waste and um, uh, trash um, shopping carts and that sort of stuff is being thrown in the back um, so by improving this uh, our goal is really to kind of make the general area uh, better for everybody around there especially the tenants thank you so much Marco that's exactly why I was asking because those improvements are very uh, very important uh, especially for that that area I'm very familiar with that area I grew up you know, around that area. So I thank you for your business. Thank you so much. I'm on board. Thank you so much. Great. Great. And then um, are there any other members of the public who wish to speak? We do have a crowded field here, so I, I'm doing my best I can to scan. So if other people see um, either raised hands, physically raised hands in the window or blue hands, 
under the participant section to raise your hand, um, let me know. I don't see any other members of the public looking to speak at this time. Okay, um, uh, I think a motion to close the public hearing is in order then. So moved. Mm -hmm. Motion has been made and seconded to uh, close the public hearing for ordinance. All in favor? Aye. 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 So motion moved. to close the hearing of the planning board. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, so now uh, in the process, we await a recommendation from the planning board, and then we'll take it up again in ordinance to act on that recommendation. Michael and Marcos, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very Thank much. You, okay, have a good night. Take care now. Okay. Is my status as a co-host going to affect this meeting if I sign off? I don't think Should so. Should I be unhosted? We're throwing you off anyway. <laughs> uh, Only because you're friendly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome, thanks. Um, all right, so I would like to um, make a motion I'll entertain a motion rather to take up items number um, three, four, um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve as a package, suspending our necessary rules. So moved. Councillor Lisi? Yes. I, uh, point of order, I think we need to continue the public hearing to our next meeting. No, we, we closed we the public hearing, and so now we need to get a recommendation from planning board, and then when we get that recommendation, we'll put it on the agenda again, but the, the public hearing... Okay, I missed... Okay, I, I just missed that part. Sorry. Yeah, thank you for that. No problem. Um, again, so items 3 through 12 as a package, and um, leaving off of that package item number 5, which was um, incorrectly placed on the agenda, uh, it's not yet been noticed. So it's not properly before us. So moved. Three. Motion has been made and seconded to take up um, items three through 12, accepting number five as a package. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And it's a public hearing, so um, let's take that vote at the, at the same time. So uh, motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Can I ask anybody who has their microphone to put, please put it on mute? We can hear your background. Thank you. Um, so the motion has been made. Um, can I get a second? Ordinance committee members, the motion to take up the um, items as a package has been made. Can I get a second? I think I saw one trying to motion that he's giving a second. <laughs> yeah. So motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so moved. Thank you. Um, so our public hearing is now open as well. Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion to open up a public hearing of the planning board. Discuss zone changes, section 710, marijuana related issues and uses uh, pertaining to the buffer zone and hours and wave reading of the public hearing notice. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, briefly what was noticed was a broad catch-all order that I filed um, allowing us to review and amend the entire uh, marijuana facilities um, section of our ordinances. And um, it's, it was uh, simply to create um, some ease of language and, and reduce the cost of publication when we noticed the public hearing um, because there were so many different and, and lengthy orders to consider. Um, so it really opens the door for a broad discussion. I think um, from what I understand, um, given that there's so many items here, we're going to try to limit the discussion in some ways of um, land use related issues and then um, if, if, as we continue, we want to take up um, other um, segments, um, we can go from there. So uh, other segments of the overall um, uh, ordinance. So where is Marcos Marrero? Marcos, um, do you have a oh. bit of a you know, presentation to help us sort of get oriented to the land use that we presently have and what changes could be um, considered? 
Uh, sure. Yes, I can. Um, I can screen share something very quickly on some um, some initial thoughts. Um, can you see that presentation? I can. Okay. Um, so very quickly, uh, this is our, our, our green mile. This is every red dot represents one location where a uh, where a cannabis company uh, has uh, located or is seeking to be located now. Uh, it looks like our downtown has chicken pox. Uh, and that's because we've been very successful at, uh, at creating a, a cannabis cluster in Holyoke. Uh, we, pr we represent uh, uh, a lot of uh, advantages to the cannabis industry. Um, there is a, a stable uh, support of the cannabis industry in the, in the political ecosystem, right? in, the, in the city council, uh, with the mayor, with the electorate. Uh, we have a, a favorable, transparent, predictable process uh, to get started. And we have the cheapest electricity in Massachusetts with available real estate. So that's, that's all um, created this perfect storm to uh, bring in uh, millions of dollars uh, of, uh, of investment uh, in the industry. Um, so a couple, just a couple of thoughts on on the series of uh, of orders that are presented in our subject of the public hearing uh, that I wanted to offer. Uh, since we've since be, we've been able to learn from the industry uh, since the original medical marijuana ordinance that was passed in 2016, and then at the end of 2017, the recreational marijuana, the the current ordinance, essentially. Uh, was passed. Uh, when is the hours of operation? Uh, the ordinance calls for hours of operation from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. That may be more adequate, and it's possible that that the original intent, by and large, uh, was you know to curtail the uh, public's access to companies, primarily retail establishments. However, it's it's very clear that manufacturing operations need round-the-clock care. Uh, in fact, inside these buildings, uh, it could be daylight when it's night outside or vice versa. Uh, they could be growing different, uh, different plants in different cycles, right? They're controlling the entire operation inside. Um, Marcos, can so, you get closer to the mic again? Sure. You keep challenging my hearing every day. And so, and so when, it's, um, when it's time to cut the plants, it's time to cut the plants and process them, right? So it's, it's very important for manufacturing operations to have uh, to have their operations running constantly, uh, it would be it, it, it would be a safe bet at at the very least to clarify in the ordinance that these hours of operations wouldn't apply to manufacturing, or even better, just just you know stating outright um, that it is a possibility to to have an operation running twenty four seven. We do have one operator that uh, that expects to to start um, fabricating it as early as January. Uh, they will be employing up to 267 people next year. They'll be employing six to 10 people per week. Uh, they plan on having a third shift, right? Like this, this has some real world impacts. Uh, so that would be one thing that I would uh, uh, particularly advise that, that, that has changed. The council can always provide uh, limits on time on a case by case basis as well. So, you know, you can either do um, some some blanket uh, uh, requirements in the ordinance, or just take it uh, one by one. Uh, the buffers uh, right now, the the buffers in the state regulations is 500 feet from a uh, from a school uh, that is uh, first grade to to 12th grade. Uh, but the way that's measured is um, quote unquote as the crow flies. Uh, so basically a straight line from the property line to, to property line. Uh, the CCC has now changed that regulation and what they've adopted now in November. Uh, and it would be as the wolf runs. So basically it would be not a straight line because that's not how uh, someone would, would traverse a city, you know, going, unless you do parkour, um, you know, it would, it would have to be like you would have to traverse the city the right of way and it would be from, from the from the entrance to the facility to the nearest entrance of, of the school. Um, that by and large would just be a change that affects us, but that, that won't require any change for us. Uh, it would be worth looking, looking at the consistency of our own ordinance because we make one specific mention, which was the, the one amendment that was done to the 2017 ordinance, which is we created a 200 foot buffer exception to that 500 foot buffer, uh, specifically for, for grow operations, right? 
So, so that would be one thing regarding buffers that I would advise that we look at just consistency with the CCC regs. The second one is that while we have made a carve out buffer for 200 feet, so essentially reducing the state buffer from 500 to 200 for grow only, uh, I, would, I would say that is a mostly, I would anticipate useless uh, uh, amendment in the sense that most companies won't just grow. If you're just growing, all you can do is sell plant byproduct. You cannot extract the flour, you cannot extract the oils, which would be the intermediary product that the company would be selling to others, even if they're not manufacturing an edible or, or a smokable product, right? They will, they will be providing basically one of those two, an oil or a flour with the active THC ingredients. And so if it's only grow, these companies will not, you know, they, they would be spending millions of dollars in capital for an indoor grow operation, and they wouldn't be able to provide the high, the, the high value um, product. So I would anticipate that this exception would be largely immaterial for the company no one would, would invest in just having a grow operation and then just like selling, basically selling leaves uh, that, 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 would not, that would not happen. Um, allowable zones, um, as, you could, as you saw from the map, um, that, 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 that tracked the industrial general uh, zone in the downtown, uh, which was of course by, by design, the council passed a a ordinance that focused on the IG zone because that's where most of the of, of the vacancy was, uh, particularly manufacturing uh, vacancy. Uh, we're quickly exhausting our inventory. Okay? This is completely the opposite problem uh, that we had uh, 10 years ago in the city. Uh, and actually the problem now starts becoming a radical increase in prices uh, for, for our manufacturing that can, you know, definitely benefits current owners that want to sell uh, but can affect our economy in other ways. And, and we could tend to in, a, in other ways that isn't land, land use zoning, but just something to have in mind. The largest uh, real estate sales, uh, I would venture to say in the history of Holyoke, uh, have happened over the last uh, two months. We sold uh, mill buildings for 3.23 million uh, and one very small property for half a million dollars. Uh, just unheard of uh, transaction. And it's all due to cannabis. Um, at the same time, we've actually lost out on some very valuable opportunities for new construction, new build, which would uh, add significantly to our tax base. And it's just because no, no matter what, some companies are just not interested in rehabbing old properties. Uh, it is, it is a, a risk from a uh, control standpoint, an environmental control standpoint on, uh, in the interior. And so some companies just want to build new state-of-the-art uh, facility that they could uh, better control the mold and the moisture inside than with some of these older buildings. Uh, we also don't have a lot of land available uh, where, where we have uh, the IG zone. So I would, I would recommend considering expanding at the very least for manufacturing uh, in, in IP property, uh, industrial park, uh, we have uh, some sizable land in that category on Wayne Farms Road and along Kelly Way or, or, or Bavala Road that could that could host some some sizable facilities there. Uh, if some of you have seen uh, the news lately, uh, one one facility was just uh, denied a zone change in East Hampton. They were actually uh, they were they were actually actively looking for for land in Holyoke, and their limiting factor was was size, but they actually wanted to. Year. Uh, that's just one example. Uh, in terms of retail opportunities, um, you know, this is, I, I, I don't expect m many folks um, to have changed their opinion on, you know, how broad the zoning uh, should be for, uh, for cannabis retail sales. Although obviously like personally, and, 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 I, and I think at least prior version of the planning board uh, was, uh, was suggesting that this be widely allowed because pharmacies are allowed in most um, uh, 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 retail business locations, we could do the same thing for, for cannabis. However, if there's, still, if there's still some reservations about that, I would, I would recommend considering overlay district or a couple of overlay districts to take advantage of some really high value targets and opportunities. The Ingleside Retail Corridor is one, is one such uh, uh, opportunity. You know, imagine having uh, a, a cannabis dispensary at or near the mall. I mean, that would, that would attract a lot of 
uh, a lot of traffic and a you know and, and I mean that in a positive way right uh, uh, a lot of sales uh, you know targeting potentially higher Maple Streets where we have significant amount of, of storefront vacancy and some buildings that are really 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 tough shape where similar to the industrial buildings that that are seeing uh, brand new investment unless you have just a sizable very sizable pot of money it's not going to make it happen right um, and so you could consider not saying okay all bl or all bh or, or bg or b8 or, or you know whatever zone which could hypothetically uh create some uh either some nervousness or some uh or some concern over unintended consequences and it could just be limited maybe to a to an overlay district or two see how that goes uh just like that like we've seen it with manufacturing and with time, we can say, okay, well, what are we looking at? Do we want to expand this or not? Or, or are we all set? Um, lastly, with deliveries, um, I'm not entirely sure what the intent has been with deliveries, but there, there are a couple of things that I'll, that I'll say uh, in this category. And that is, we cannot impede, as a municipality, deliveries into Holyoke. Uh, companies will be able to deliver somewhere. Uh, and 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 customer it's legal to consume so customers residents in in holio can 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 call a company if if companies in holio can't deliver or will call one in east hampton north hampton chicopee wherever and 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 get it here the issue is if we don't want deliveries here then we're cutting ourselves out from profit sharing on on those sales but i would it, i would also say that the current ordinance readily allows the special permit granting authority which right now is the city council to look at whether those delivery operations are, are safe and secure um, and you have been able to do that uh, with with some of the companies that have said directly that they will be delivering um, I would say that the issue is is actually greater than just deciding whether we want to partake in 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 the in in those sales right and take advantage of that income it's that um, if you're doing medical uh, marijuana, you actually have you're required to deliver to your patients. And one interesting quirk of the regulations is that if you grow plants for medical purposes, you can readily change those over to plant stock for your recreational marijuana for recreational marijuana sales. But you cannot do that the other way around. You can't have a 50/50 stock of recreational and, and medical. And if you're short on the medical, you cannot change it over from recreational to, to medical. Therefore, in order to hedge their bets, companies will more than more likely than not uh, categorize their stock as medical, or they'll have more medical than, than recreational because they can always switch it out to, to recreational if they can. And so if we were to signal or somehow regulate or impede deliveries, I would anticipate that that's going to have a real uh, a real impact in terms of the concerns from the industry. That then it, it, it's just a, a critical item that that wouldn't allow them to do business in Holyoke. Last point I want to make: uh, delivery. Uh, the the Cannabis Control Commission has um, this year prioritized regulations on delivery rather than social consumption because social consumption is a whole a whole other animal. Um, and so they've they've actually created two uh, two tiers of licenses for that. One is uh, I mean I'll call it the the Amazon model, which is partly what the industry fears. Um, you can have that's basically you can have a warehouse, you can stock up on product, and then you can take deliveries and 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 deliver it to uh, uh, to to retail customers. Obviously, that would require you to have a facility that contains on site. Uh, marijuana. So as far as land use that is concerned, that fits readily into our existing ordinance. And we follow the same process that, that our ordinance uh, requires for everyone, right? You have marijuana on your site, therefore we want to make sure that it's safe, secure, and it's not creating a public health hazard uh, or, any, or any other hazard. But there's another license that is a courier only license that's essentially no different than Uber Eats, DoorDash, or Grubhub. You know, anyone who's ordered food from the house knows who, uh, has, and, and doesn't want to venture out during the pandemic understands you, know, you put an order in, someone's out, they go to the facility, they grab it and they bring it over to you. 
that does not require a business facility. You could either be at your home doing this, you could be out and about in your car and doing this, or you could have an office, a centralized office where you go and take orders and deliver them. As far as a land use is concerned, there's no discernible difference between the person doing that and the lawyer representing uh, uh, the, the cannabis company. None whatsoever. It's just all you need is either a cell phone and a computer or a, or a desk uh, because those folks are not taking mar uh, getting marijuana on the site. So um, I, would, I, I would advise that the ordinance be clearer. You know, it, it may be open to interpretation on that end because cannabis isn't on site and the purpose of the ordinance is clear that the purpose is to regulate the unique nature of marijuana. I would advise that, it's, that it be made perfectly clear that this, that we're not intending to put small mom and pop shops, you know, local residents that could really participate in the industry through doing deliveries uh, through the process of a special permit. And what are they going to submit? You know, they're not, they're, they're not going to compete the real estate in the IG zone where these basic real estate transactions are happening. They're either working it from their home or from their car or from a small office, right? They're just taking an order, picking it up and, and sending it to someone's house. Those, those are my thoughts. The only one that's not here, um, and I'll, I'll stop screen sharing for a moment, um, which is uh, there, was a, uh, there was an order about language for uh, essentially like a referenda on, on social consumption. Uh, I, I would recommend that be given to uh, leave to withdraw at this point. And uh, maybe Aaron Vega is here and, and, and he could, or, or he will join us later. He, he could add to this. Hey, Aaron. So it, it, essentially, um, I won't go into a lot of detail, but there is a, 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 there is a sticking point on social consumption on what, what is required to allow it locally. And the sticking point is actually between the CCC, the way the CCC is interpreting the legislation, state legislators, and the Secretary of the Commonwealth. Um, and so there's a three-way impasse, which right now uh, has, the impasse is so significant that the CCC decided, we're actually gonna, in 2020, we're gonna take up delivery regulations. We're not even gonna touch the social consumption. There's another layer on social consumption as well, which is the Commonwealth's regulations on indoor smoking of any product. Um, is uh, they're, they're strict enough where that's 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 another beast that would have to be slayed, right? Like it, it, it's beyond the CCC's uh, purview, um, and so uh, I don't anticipate we're going to gain anything by considering that language. And there's even been uh, part of the sticking point is the Secretary of the Commonwealth questioning whether that's actually the language that we would have to pass. So I would, I would say it's safe to right now just let that go. And when the state has clear guidelines on what it would take uh, to do social consumption and we have clarity on, on, on what the on what the pros and cons are then we can discuss whether we want to do that and how we do it uh, those are those are my thoughts on what we've learned from the industry and I'm, I'm happy to take any questions or if anyone wants to know anything else um, I have one really quick question on the last slide that you were sharing Marcos um, yes. you know there was an acronym for SPGA Special yeah. Permit Granting Authority. Thank it's, you. It's the fancy name for who's approving the permit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I just didn't know. Um, okay, so are there questions from committee members? Um, so it seems if we're. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Councilor Anderson Burgos. I first want, I, I, I heard that you closed the public hearing. Like, we opened it. You opened it. Okay. I just wanted to make sure and see if anybody from public wanted to speak on these matters. Right, usually we ask um, committee members if they want to speak and ask questions, and then we uh, turn to the public. Um, okay, so then just to sort of um, link up the comments in the presentation that Marcos made, um, so when we're talking about hours of operation, that would relate to item number nine, when we're talking about buffers, um, that looks like item number six. Um, the um, allowed zones and the zoning relates to um, number eight. 
although um, eight refers to downtown residential in particular, and there was some comments uh, made re relative to IP, which isn't identified individually, but it could be considered under the broad umbrella order that I filed um, in item number three. Um, and then finally, deliveries um, would relate to, um, sorry, where are we? Item number seven. And then um, items number item number 10 that was filed by Council Bartley, I got a communication from him earlier today requesting that it be given leave to withdraw. And then the remaining items, 11 and 12, um, Marcos re recommended that we also give those leave to withdraw um, related to social consumption. So I just wanted to help um, orient Marcos's comments to the agenda that we have before us. Um, I do see uh, our representative, Aaron Vega here. Um, I don't know, um, Aaron, if you wanna speak to um, any of the points that Marcos made, especially um, perhaps in relation to deliveries or, or um, social consumption. Um, but w while you're here, um, let's make use of you and the, the uh, public, public comment has already been opened. Uh, thanks, Councillor, and thanks to everybody. Nice to see everybody. Um, I guess um, I don't have a comment on the delivery. I think that there's uh, that that's that's regulatory, and uh, I know there's been a lot of debate about it. I see other people on this call that are more expert in that part of it than I am. Just the one other thing I just want to add, maybe on the social consumption aspect. Really, the last substantive conversation we had was probably summer of. 2019, Marcos, perhaps, when uh, uh, Commissioner Shannon Title came out, um, and it was representatives um, uh, from East Hampton, North Hampton, and Hoyuk, and we con we convened with her. And at that point, the, even the idea about social consumption was going to be a pilot program. Um, so it would be a whole different process. Um, and again, that was a year and a half ago, and who knows what they're even thinking now. Um, again, there may be some other people on the call that have more intel on that, but I think that at that point, it was going to be a pilot program, um, and there would be a much different arrangement with cities and the CCC and the state to even have that go through. So I would firmly, I just want to support the giving leave to withdraw on any of those sort of orders on that because uh, it's not really before us. And if anything ever comes before us, the council will, of course, be part of it. And I guess I just, I would just, I did want to just say, I guess the only other comment I have is that if the conversation, I think on, on number six or whatever was the residential, um, change to uh, dispensaries. I, I guess I would just hope that if you're even considering IP or other zones, that there's a larger conversation. Uh, and perhaps I do see uh, Boston Bud, but perhaps with some of the people that have already invested uh, in downtown and already here. Uh, and so I just would love to have sort of a, a bigger conversation on that. So I assume it's not on the agenda, so it can't be discussed necessarily. But when that does happen, I hope we have a larger discussion. Sure. Um, I do think that we are initiating um, part of that discussion um, here, uh, and there is uh, an item that sort of serves as a catch-all for, for anything. So don't expect anything to sort of be resolved this evening, but we're definitely initiating these conversations um, this evening. Right. And um, just as a point of order, I have reached out to um, everyone that I know that had um, previously applied for a permit in the city alert them that this meeting was happening this evening. So I do think that we have a lot of present owners um, here with us this evening who likely want to comment. Um, Mr. Kelly, do you want to see if any of your um, commissioners want to ask questions and then um, really open it up to public comment? Yep, I just want to say, I think, you know, it's important. We're kind of hit on, looks like, like four key areas. You know, hours of operation, looking in the buffers, um, you know, zones where it'll be allowed for either manufacturing or sale, and then obviously delivery. So I think, you know, it's probably good to focus. Those are four kind of critical areas because we, we've learned a lot as we've kind of got along with, you know, this whole new industry to the city, and it clearly is, um, you know, proving to be very popular. I mean, we've got an awful lot of site plan reviews before the planning board for some of these facilities. So um, I think it's very timely that we, uh, you know, we have these public hearings we kind of revisit uh, these very important issues around you know, how it's regulated within within our city. Um, other members of the board have any questions or comments? Um, seeing none, I'll just note. I was muted, I'm sorry. You're all uh, muted, go ahead. I have now yeah. unmuted myself, but um, I basically, you know, I'm inclined to agree with every point that Marcos made here. And it 
you know, what he had to say presents basically a comprehensive set of revisions to our current ordinance. And procedurally, you know, I don't know how ordinance normally does this and how it intersects with the orders that you all filed. But if there is some way to consolidate his suggestions and bring them into what's currently before us, I would think that would be a good way to approach getting this done because they do intersect. And I would hate to, you know, since we have what's obviously a real engine of economic development going on here, and you know, I would hate to see us delay in making the facilitating changes until Holyoke loses its first mover advantage. You know, we've just done that too often in the past. Okay. And you know, if we can really centralize a lot of the industry here, and this is a way to do it, you know, I just, I think it both procedurally and substantively, it's good to make that a priority. Um, and then, uh, Ms. Panich, are you are you simply stating that um, we should separate out those items that don't necessarily need um, a zoning uh, recommendation from the from the planning board? Not necessarily. I mean, this looks like a full package to me. And you know, I think if you don't need a recommendation from us, then there's no reason that you shouldn't proceed. But it sounded like a great deal of this does need recommendations from us. The um, expansion to other zones. And you know, things like the change to DR specifically, which I suspect is there as a single zone, not because anyone thinks it should be a limited change, but because there was that one property that basically you know, required being remade into a spot zone because it was an appropriate use in DR, but it wasn't, you know, DR did not at the time allow for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think we should fold all of the zone changes into that if possible. The buffer, uh, changes will need planning board uh, recommendations. There are probably a bunch of others that went by that will need planning board recommendations. You know, what I was suggesting was more if it is possible to get all of this done within the ambit of the orders you've got previously filed, you know, that would be an efficient way to do it. Right. And thank you for that. Thanks for clarifying. I do I think mean, we can do that. Yes, I, mean, I just yeah, I just had a comment. Um, basically, uh, in favor of, of what uh, Mr. Barreros has said, I've been on the planning board for many, many years. And I remember when this topic first came up and um, I felt then <clears throat> that the ordinance uh, as it was fashioned then was way too restrictive. Um, and so I'm glad to hear that, uh, you know, a, a process has has happened and we're moving really forward with this. This is a huge financial engine for our city and uh, Lord knows we need it. So um, we, we don't need to be, uh, you know, going backwards. We need to move forward. That's it. You're here. Kate, Kate, your hand is up. Go ahead. Yeah, I just, I also think as we're revisiting this, and I'm relatively new to this process, only being on the planning board for a year, so I was not around for the initial discussions, but it seems to me that we are entering a phase of um, our dealing with this industry where we might also consider whether um, having the city council as a special permit granting authority is really the right end stop to this process or whether it's it makes more sense to um, put this more back on um, the planning department for approvals. Right, and I'll just say I did file that order. Um, it's item number four on the agenda because I do feel that, um, you know, to the points that have already been made, it's not a novel industry anymore. I think we, we very much understand um, what the industry is, where it's going, the economic value that it has for our community in particular. Um, and I do think that uh, it has been, um, you know, in some areas in particular, overly restrictive. And we did, I, I, I would say that we, we did lose our first mover advantage on the retail end for sure. Um, and that's where the initial um, revenue streams related to tax dollars um, were. So 
Um, I, I think that we're we're seeing that it is um, you know a really appropriate business for for the manufacturing sort of base that we have in the city. Um, and I think that we should really work to um, expand um, its reach while, while keeping it um, appropriate for the neighborhoods that we have. In the uh, just, and also to follow up, I think that to a certain extent, things that um, planning could logically and reasonably ask for from applicants mm -hmm. that would um, increase the, um, say, increase the visuals, inc increase the way that a, a business is integrated into its neighborhood are things that the planning board, the planning department can have more um, influence on an applicant when they have to take the planning department more seriously if, if they're not seeing the city council as their last step. I would also point out to be very, very candid that We've had a couple of very challenging applications um, that are just, they're just totally incomplete. And I think to Kate's point, if uh, if they if the applicants really do up front, they have to really, you know, deal planning, they could um, maybe have a lot of the, the, uh, the preparation work done uh, in an order, which would probably speed up some of these applications because as I say, they're very, very incomplete at this point. A few of them are just taking much longer than they should. But I think that's, I think that does get the heart of, uh, of some of this discussion. Right, and then um, just to make a point on 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 that, there, it, um, you know, my, from my personal perspective, um, the city council, we don't have the technical expertise to um, really do a thorough review, even when we're getting, um, you know, the review that the planning department does, whether it's Jeff or some other planner. Uh, I think it's very hard to understand, um, you know, the um, the salience or like the importance of the different features that are being considered and oftentimes we're just deferring uh, the applicant to the um, you know to come whole with all the um, issues that are identified by the planning board so I, in some ways I don't even see the city council really um, serving a purpose in the process um, just to be perfectly frank we're 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 essentially um, asking people to come before us just to say follow the outlines and guidelines that planning um, gave you. <laughs> so we're, we're creating a, an additional step in the process um, w without really um, exerting, I think, uh, you know, a, an appropriate sort of influence. We're, we're not altering the, um, the projects in any meaningful way as far as I've seen. So why not expedite them um, through a board that has more technical expertise? Yeah, and frankly, our staff has more technical expertise. You know, you've got Jeffrey who has to go in a thousand directions for you already. You know, we have actual experts and, you know, Jeff does an amazing job of pulling together all the other city departments so we can get input from everybody at once. And, you know, that's a lot to dump on an already overburdened city council. Thank you. Um, okay, so for members of the public who wish to speak, I just want to note to, for you all that there is a participants um, button at the at the bottom where you could um, use uh, the raise hand function on, under that um, button, or if you want to put your hand in the um, screen and we could see you, um, we'll we'll start there. Councilor Lisi. Yes. Yes, um, there is someone with a hand up. Is Helen Andrews Gomez, and her hand is up. Great, sure. Um, so, Ms. Go uh, Ms. Andrews, if you want to speak, you, you have the floor. Great, Hi, sure. thank you. Um, it's nice to see everyone. Sorry, my camera's just not working well today. Um, I I really appreciate the focus on this, and and um, my husband and business partner Chris and I are so grateful to be here in Holyoke to be in a community that, that welcomes us and fosters this business. Um, and our family is uh, just really happy to be here. So thank you. Um, I, just my initial comment, one thing, I think all of this is really great and really expands the business for the city and brings a lot of other, attracts a lot of other businesses here. I just wanted to make one comment on operating hours. I, I, while I appreciate um, the recommendation to go 24 hours in, on production, we are in cultivation or we will be in cultivation and manufacturing as well. 
I think that limiting retail to 8 p.m. Uh, hinders the business. Um, you know, that's another opportunity for a first mover advantage loss. INSA in East Hampton is open till 9.15. NETA in Northampton is open till 10. Theory in Chicopee is open till 9 p.m. Um, you know, having businesses open in downtown Holyoke, whether cannabis or not, encourages people to come to Holyoke, see what other businesses are operating here. And, you know, maybe there's not a whole lot of businesses opening, uh, operating in downtown Holyoke presently, but there will be. And whether they're cannabis or not, just having businesses open beyond eight, I think is good for the city. Um, and also, you know, we don't want to lose out to Chicopee, East Hampton and Northampton. We want people to come here for these tax dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there other members of the public who wish to speak? Um, I do. Karen see... Tolton in chat. I don't see. Uh, let's see. Where's the chat? Okay. So is Karen here to speak? Karen, I see you. Go ahead. Um, you have the floor. Everybody. Oh, I'm sorry. I can you please give your name and address for the record? And um, Helen, I'm, go I'm going to ask you to put it in the um, comment section and I'll, I'll add it to the record myself. Would your you name? like our business address or our home address? Um, your home address and you could you can mention the business as well, but um, it's okay. really the home address. So I'm Karen Talton, I'm the CEO of Exotica uh, Farms and we're located in, on Appleton and we've purchased a house in Holyoke at 69 Lexington Avenue. Great, and um, go ahead. Well, first I'd like to thank Helen for what she just said because I, I thoroughly agree with those comments. Um, there are a few things, as far as the dispensaries being open later, I thoroughly agree with that. But also as a cultivator, um, we came to Holyoke because we, we fell in love with Holyoke as most of us, some of you know when we got here and purchased a building that's very, very old and it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of time. And the special permit process was lengthy and, uh, you know, and a lot to learn. However, um, a couple of comments. So one, as far as the business is being open 24 seven for, was that for cultivation or? Yeah, for manufacturing and all. Okay, so for there's security issues with being open 24 seven. I just want to first mention that. So there's some issues that come into play here. Uh, we've been doing this 20 years in California and we've never harvested in the middle of the night. So there are ways to work through that. Um, but also one of the things that I suggest is that you form some sort of a cannabis uh, committee that would be, that would help for, for help for the folks that are applying for a dispensary or cultivation or manufacturing or delivery so that there's so that it doesn't take up so much space and time with the city the people who work you know John if it wasn't for John and Jeff and Marcos honestly it'd be, it would have been a lot for much more difficult for us but taking all uh, so much time with them asking them so many questions if there was a committee formed um, which I would certainly volunteer for and I'm sure others would as well in the business where we could help people through that process and there are several things which I won't get into now that are not necessarily necessary, which would make the process go much quicker. Um, I agree thoroughly with Marcos and a lot of the things that he said. I think that there's a lot of revenue to be made in this industry for the city. The problem is it takes so long to open up some of these businesses and you know that you guys aren't seeing the revenue that you could and should see. Um, with deliveries, a lot of the time, um, a lot of the time with deliveries where we are from in Oakland, there is just a platform, like Marcos has mentioned, basically it's a platform, it's a website they order from, and then we have a distribution site which gets all of these different products that are ordered from the websites and then delivered. Um, and that's very lucrative. We have, we have more delivery services than we do dispensaries actually in Oakland, and we're a town of 500,000, so I know that here it really would be very lucrative, very uh, you know, the revenue for the taxes and, and everything else. But I also believe there should be more community, um, there should be there should be more of a, a, a community based, you know, everyone that's in this industry 
knows that it's difficult, it's costly to start these business. However, we need to get involved more with the communities. And so these are just some small points I wanted to make. Um, I could say a thousand things about everything that was said, but I think what I will do, Marcos, is maybe write you an email um, about some of these things and hopefully like have another, you know, have another meeting and, and speak on it. So that is, you know, that's all. As far as the distances are concerned, the 200 or 500 feet um, distances, I think you have to look at the areas. Like there's just certain things that have to be looked at before you just make these decisions. And, you know, sometimes if you're close to a school, you're close to, you know, housing, unfortunately with this industry, it starts to become a security issue. And I think some of the security measures, and I've spoke to uh, the police, I believe the, chief, the police chief about these things, some of the mandates may have to change in order for security, in order for things to be more secure for the business owners. So I just, that's, I just wanted to say those things. And as well as you, Helen, I love it here. and. I'm very, very happy. I'm so thrilled to be here, actually. And I mean, it's 72 degrees in California right now. So you know I love it here. Um, <laughs> so with that said, I thank you all for listening and for having this meeting. And I think this is a, it's a wonderful, it's just incredible how Holyoke is so welcoming to this industry. So thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Karen. Uh, I see Councilor Hernandez has her hand up. So, um, Councilor Hernandez, do you want to speak? Yes, thank you, um, Madam Chair. And through the Madam Chair to Ms. Um, was it Karen Telton that was speaking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Um, I would like to um, ask you on when, when you say, because one of my concerns is also that. Um, when we're talking uh, about security and schools and housing and all of these um, industries, right, opening up um, in such proximity, and you speak about um, about um, communities and being involved, getting more involved in the community, um, what is it that you mean when you say this? Is it that the industries such as yours are looking to connect further into the community, but there's no channel right now to do that? Can you please develop on that a little bit? Because I'm interested in that part. Absolutely. So um, in Oakland, we're, we're very involved with our community. We're, there's, a, there's a lot of organizations that we've participated in and actually started. This industry is, you know, as we know, you know, a billion dollar industry. And for a lot of, not for everyone, by the way, but for a lot of us, um, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of money to be made, obviously. And it needs to, a lot of it needs to go back into the community, not just in taxes. You know, when I look at Holyoke, what I see is that it's such a beautiful community, but life needs to be, you know, breathed back into it, you know, to beautify the city, to bring people here, as Helen was speaking about. Um, recently, we, I had a conversation, I believe, with you, Marcos, you know, regarding these things. You know, it's it's making it desirable for people to come here, to ha to go to restaurants, to go to you know when when the time is right. I know there's COVID, but you know, but to bring people into our community to feel safe, to have it look inviting and feel inviting, and there are many organizations and many many um, folks here that just need a lot of help. And I believe that the cannabis industry, and not just the taxes paid, but the cannabis industry, we need to get together as a community and help the city that we live in, that we work in, you know, that we are developing businesses in. And I don't, what I don't feel here is that sense of community within the cannabis industry. And that's what we're really hoping to start building that. Fantastic, thank you so much. And one of the things that comes to mind when you speak about this, um, helping Holyoke transform, become more attractive, more safe is dealing with the issues of homelessness and all the traffic that we have, which is is an impact. It's the first thing that you see when you come into this beautiful city. And, and I would love to um, see this relationship develop in which um, your industry, as well as others, can, mm -hmm. can form that relationship and invest back in the community, not just with tax dollars, but creating all these innovative ways to deal with this and to change the face of polio. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to add one thing. 
there, um, there's a particular building in Holyoke that we're very interested in, and our thought for that building is to build basically a sort of resource slash community center for the for the community. So there would be, for instance, having a child care, having compu a computer lab, having workshops for for um, employment. We believe that, that, especially with the cannabis industry, that there needs to be more education. And we would like to be able to bring that type of, I know there's some at the community college, but it's very different. So to be able to offer more jobs to our, to our local community, we would, we're, we're very interested right now, uh, like as I said, in, in building out this particular building to really be a good resource center. And I think that those are the types of things that our industry and it's not about cannabis. It's not a cannabis-based organization. It would be a community-based organization. So these are some just some of the, the thoughts that we're having right now and that we're looking into right now as a company. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, someone alerted me to um, Damaris had her hand up. Name and address for the record, Damaris. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Damaris Aponte. I live at 16 Mayor Drive in Holyoke. And you can go ahead and make your comments, yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm called, okay. So I am Damaris, I live in the city of Holyoke. I'm very involved with the community. Um, I plan to open a, I wanna be one of the first equity applicants to open my own wholesale delivery business here in the city of Holyoke. So I'm coming from Holyoke. Um, I've been living in this disproportionate city my whole life. I'm an equity applicant, like I said. Um, I love the city of Holyoke. I wanna keep my business here in Holyoke cause I wanna give back. and. Um, as many of you guys know here, I'm very involved in the city. I wanna talk a little bit about what Helen, I wanna piggyback on Sharon and Helen both. Helen's amazing, Helen Andrews, I've met her many times. I work with her in the cannabis community and I wanna say thank you, Helen, for um, being out there. You're not one of the big cannabis businesses that could give money to the city of Folio, but you're there all the time cleaning, helping out, volunteering, and just wanna be a part of things. And I wanna say thank you, Sharon. I don't know you, I haven't met you. I have met a lot of people in the cannabis industry in Holyoke. I'm very, very involved. I have sat down in round table discussions. I have sat with big, big um, CEOs here in the city of Holyoke of cannabis licensees. I have worked with many of them. I have worked with many of them. Um, Frank from Boston Bud, he's one that's very, um, into the committee, he's always at the food banks, he's always trying to give back. He himself don't have a lot to give back as money-wise to the community, but he tries to always go out there and help out and give a, um, a lending hand. Sharon, yes, we want all these cannabis businesses to do portfolio. That's what we're looking for. We want to um, set up a community. We want to set up round tables. We want you guys to give back. There are so many nonprofits here in the city of Polio that they could use help. Um, they probably need the cannabis communities to work with these nonprofits to get back to get back in the city. Um, Holyoke is a beautiful um, city. I've been here my whole life. It's a little run down right now, but it's coming back up. It's looking good, and I'm happy. Businesses are coming to Holyoke. The cannabis industry with the taxes is making it look better. So yes, let's get back to the community. I totally agree. Let's clean up these these streets. I agree. We're leaving the IG zone down in that area for right now and not moving it too many places in Holyoke. And that's the reason I say that is because let's work on one part of Holyoke while we at it. We're working on that area. It's starting to look nice. They're fixing the streets. The um, warehouses are being fixed. There's um, new stores coming around. Um, it's starting to look nice. Let's fix one part of Holyoke at a time before we start moving these IG zones all over Holyoke. Let's use these tax dollars and use them and fix these areas because where the IG zones are is the worst areas of polio. And now with all this money and all these being fixed, these streets are looking really nice um, down Dwight Street, Ray Street, um, the Canal Walk. One day we'll probably hopefully have the Corazon Project, um, the Community of South Holyoke with Terry Murphy. He's done a great job there. Thank you so much for staying as a counselor and listening. Um, and there's a lot that's going to be changing. So I just want to say, um, yeah, let's get these cannabis people that have money. Let's fix our community um, for it. I'm going to be one of them. I want to get back. Um, I want to fix it. And um, let's fix our city up because this is our city and it's going to be good. And it's what's going to, it's what we call home. So I just want to say thank you to everybody. And I'm, I'm coming for my business here. So be ready. 
Uh, thanks, Damaris. And I just want to um, note that the um, individual who is commenting about the um, business and leadership developments in the community was Karen <coughs> Walton, um, whereas Sharon is the um, uh, administrative support and staff for our uh, planning department. So I just wanted to make that dis distinction. Okay. I apologize. I apologize. But Karen, if you want to talk to me, definitely reach out. I could, we could definitely talk about the city of Holyoke. I could point you in the right directions. You want to work in the city. Let's, um, next Wednesday, we need volunteers for the Winter Wonderland, 5 to 8 o'clock at the Flats um, Kelly School. So anybody wants to volunteer, let me know. Actually, I would love to be involved with this. Um, I'm, I'm going not to, sure. I'm gonna ask you, Karen, to um, connect with Damaris offline so that we could wrap up um, business here. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not sure how to Run a chat. I'll put you guys in touch, okay? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Are there other members of the public who want to comment? I see. Um, is that Frank Daly? Yeah. Frank, go ahead. Name and address for the record. Uh, Frank Daly, 109 Pennsylvania Ave in Springfield, Massachusetts. <coughs> Boston Bus Factory on Sargent Street in Holyoke. Um, a lot of good things being talked about here. I love seeing the discussion open. I think that... Uh, Regulations were created a long time ago. Now that businesses are opening, it's time to find them and um, look at what the next step for Holyoke would be. Um, I think Marcos and the team has done a great job. Um, forward to seeing more businesses open in Holyoke. Um, I think there are some things that we also need to make sure that we poise ourselves. If Holyoke wants to be the destination city for cannabis as it's tried to be, there's some things we need to look at to do that. Um, um, social consumption and and while I agree with Marcos and Aaron both um, um, on um, the status of the, uh, the state to finalize regulations there are other towns that have already held referendums um, and are prepared for that either way and I think waiting for another election might pose to be a challenge if you want to be on the cusp of the leading edge of the industry as this does and as, a, as Holyoke has tried to be. Um, I think that social consumption, uh, Springfield has already announced as one of the participants in the, um, the 12. Um, there are several participants that have already been announced. I know East Hampton got that vote in advance in case you need it down the road. Um, there are other things like smoking ordinances that Holyoke, there's a lot, um, there's a lot to be done to get social consumption on the board, um, but we don't want to lose out to Springfield or neighboring towns in the process of that because I think that would be detrimental to Holyoke and the profitability and the effect that the industry will have on the neighborhoods. Um, so the other thing that I would suggest is relooking at the post community agreement and the 3% impact fee. Now, while I agree that will bring revenue, um, you're also uh, poised to be to have most licenses per capita in the state. So does Holyoke want to do it by volume? And if they want to do it by volume, then we should make it the least expensive place and the destination place for buying. So as it stands, the 3% impact fee has to be passed on to your consumers, including Holyoke residents. So I can't even discount that 3% off for residents of Holyoke. So they're double taxed. It's cheaper for them to go to Chicopee and East Hampton to buy it. So these are things that I think that really um, that round table discussion and opening up, not just the zoning, um, but all aspects of cannabis now and really putting a vision for what the industry wants to be in Holyoke going forward, I think now is a good time to do that. And I think you have a lot of people that are very active, Damaris, uh, Nueva, Aaron, you know, you've got a lot of people that are, are really active and, and looking to help uh, grow this industry. Um, now's the time to take advantage of it. So, and, and with that, I'll say um, thank you and we appreciate all of the support that we've gotten in the process. Um, thanks, Frank. I may reach out to you um, for uh, some of the language that was passed in um, Springfield and East Hampton just to see how specific it was and, and perhaps um, take outside of uh, these orders um, because these do require public because they will be related to zoning, whereas something like the referendum um, could be explored outside of, uh, of this process here. Feel free. Um, You're welcome to contact us at any point. Thank you. I appreciate that. I see uh, a hand from Cleon Byron. Cleon, uh, name and address for the record, and then um, you can go ahead and share your comments. 
Yeah, uh, 23 Alpine Street, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, <clears throat> hi, um, I'm going to just say that uh, I really got into this from Damaris and uh, doing the social equity and got really on the found out about Holyoke and the great things that are going on over there. I just want to just throw in there that just because there's so much going on and I can see the energy, I would love to be involved in any which way I could. And uh, Damaris, you know, we talk all the time and Aaron do also. And uh, I just want to say that if there's a possibility, I, I would love to be involved inside of that industry in Holyoke. Great, thank you. Uh, are there other members of the, uh, I see Morris Partee yeah. with his hand up, Morris? Name and address for the record. Sorry if I'm start, starting to sound a broken record here, but uh, it is important. Thank you so much, Chair Lisi. Morris Partee, 127 St. Colby Drive, right here in Holyoke. Um, so, so just to give a little bit of background for my comments here, um, I'm the co-founder of Emerald River and Emerald River, Maine. Um, I'm also an advisor to the uh, to a group called MCAD, Massachusetts Cannabis Association for Delivery. And over the past uh, three or four months, I've gotten to know the delivery regulations very well and have advocated for them directly with the commissioners. Uh, um, I, I'm very proud of the work of MCAD and, and my fellow folks on that in order to create, and, and I'm going to take a little bit of exception with what Marco said, it is not the Amazon of delivery, and it is not, and warehouse is definitely the wrong word for how it operates, uh, um, but, but anyway, I, I would like to offer my services because I've gotten to know the regulations so intimately. So to any of the esteemed uh, committee members, planning board or ordinance committee, um, I, I've, I've, I know these regulations now inside and out. Um, so I'm also a social equity second cohort member by virtue of being a whole resident for at least the past 15 years, along with Damaris and Cleon. So shout out to my fellow uh, so social equity second cohort members. And then I'm also a ZBA alternate uh, here in Holyoke. So, so, I, so really, I just have two areas I'd like to comment on. That, uh, so aside from uh, quibbling with Marcos on some of the characterizations of the new delivery, I am in complete agreement with virtually everything else he said about the opportunity in front of Holyoke to be a first mover. And in, in sp so specifically going to, I guess, uh, uh, issue number eight about zoning, I feel extremely not, not only do I feel strongly that Holyoke could capture an incredible amount of additional revenue, additional revitalization of the city by expanding specifically retail into, believe it or not, retail zones. <laughs> we, we now have 80 uh, 80 something cannabis shops open across the state, including Frank. Congrats to Frank for being amongst the first. We have 80 across the state and no significant incidents whatsoever. Uh, I, 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 uh, Chair Lisi, I believe you said something about, hey, we have pharmacies all over the city. One time when I spoke to Mayor Morris, he, he echoed the same thing. Why couldn't there be cannabis retail next to any pharmacy? So, so any zone which allows a pharmacy, it just makes sense you would allow a cannabis retail shop there as well. One other thing I'll add to that conversation, which I shared with uh, uh, Representative Vega uh, via email uh, last week, is that as a Holyoke resident, I would have loved to have our first store be in Holyoke. But with the two stores open, Frank and the one other, and 10 more that, that Marcus showed on his excellent map there, the industrial zone is well spoken for in terms of Canna retail. So, so scouring not only Holyoke, but and scouring not only the entire state of Massachusetts, I made the decision along with my partners that our first store is actually going to open up in Lewiston, Maine. And that is because it is, believe it or not, as much as I love Holyoke and as welcoming as Holyoke is, 
Lewiston, Maine, it was even more welcoming. We are building a store from the ground up on a vacant lot. We're very excited about that. Of course, we still want to build right here in Holyoke. Uh, and so I would love to eventually have a shop in any of those excellent zones that Marcos discussed uh, at the opening of the session. Um, turning to, to delivery for just one second, um, so I just want to clarify about the delivery rules. I, I mean, and Marcos had it exactly right. The, the rules that the commission has created is that any city that allows retail, can a retail, whether or not they actually have one open, is fair game to be delivered to, no matter whether it's from within that city or from without. And of course, in Holyoke, we are at the crossroads of Western Mass, if not Western New England. Our, our intersection of 90 and 91 has, is why we're such a great telecom center, a great, great transportation center. I'm sure why Amazon put their shop next to the mall. And so, so as absolutely Holyoke is primed to be a terrific source for Damaris's delivery company. I would love to start a delivery company here at probably next summer is about when we would see the first licenses rolling out from the commission. Um, so, and, and specifically for that delivery operator. So just for clarification, delivery operator is the new, uh, uh, what I'm gonna call it real delivery. The other model, the courier model, the Uber Eats model is financially unviable for operators. And, the, and there's several reasons why that is uh, there's all kinds of, so it's not like an Uber Eats, all, true, all you need is a car. With the, with the cannabis courier model, you need way, way more than a car. And, and, not, and, not to, and just to elaborate on what Marcos said, you actually cannot do it with no location. You absolutely have to have a location that you're operating from. You, you cannot be some sort of freelance courier. Um, and all, all, all in the courier model, all sales do have to come from a retail store. So, so one reason why the Cannabis Dispensary Association advocated it for it is because if the only model was the courier model, then Damaris would have to go either to Frank's store or to Canna Provisions or even any other store in the Valley and say, hey, I, I'm picking up XYZ product and delivering it to the customer who ordered it. The reason why I say it's not financially viable is that there's absolutely no margin in that model going through the retail store. Um, so, so that was why I helped petition for the delivery operator. And, and so, so just, just elaborating just a little bit more on what Marcos said, rather than thinking of it as some sort of an Amazon, which it actually can't be, it has to be owned for the first three years by a social equity applicant such as Damaris and Cleon on this call. Any, any Holyoke resident pretty much is actually available to be a social equity person. So, so it's a kind of a Holyoke, it, it helps keep things homegrown to Holyoke. And um, so, ra and rather than thinking of it as a warehouse, it's simply like, just like Frank in his store has to have a secure vault. Well, the same thing would happen with a delivery. It's, it's so it's the, the requirements for it are just like a store. So you have to have the security. So, so you're simply storing the product in your own premises rather than having to go to Frank's store or to Canna Provisions or any of the other 10 stores that are opening up. So with that, I will wrap up my comments. Thank you so much, everyone. And I'm very, again, I'm very happy to submit my contact information if anybody has any questions about the intricacies of delivery regulation or so forth, very happy to help anytime. Thank you so much. Um, I see a hand from Ruben Said. I just want to note that um, in terms of our curfew, we're, we are at uh, 810 and we, uh, we're talking about wrapping things up with this hearing close to 830. Um, Ruben, uh, you have the floor, name and address for the record. Uh, yes, good afternoon. My name is Ruben Said. I'm a resident of West Roxbury, Massachusetts for 833 Washington Street. And um, I'm also a social equity participant. So um, I'm 
very interested in opening a home delivery business out of Holyoke. Um, so I, I joined this call tonight because um, I, I, Morris actually shared the link with me and, and I noticed that um, you would be talking about the home delivery regulations. Um, so I just want to express my support for the proposals that Marcus put forward um, as a potential um, operator that's looking for real estate right now in, in the town of Holyoke. Um, I'm very, or, or the, the thought of not having to go through the special permit process and, and the thought that that, that it's so welcoming um, is it, very welcoming to me. Um, it, it really makes me interested to um, do whatever I can to, to open up in Holyoke. Um, so I'm going to keep my comments quick and, and I just really want to express my support for everything that Mark has proposed. And I also love the idea that um, to continue um, becoming more integrated into the community, um, which is also why I wanted to be part of this call so I can introduce myself and, and start becoming part of the community. I don't I know that I'm I don't have a big presence out there just yet, but I would love to become more involved with everyone else on this call and, and see how uh, the industry and, and as a whole can become more more involved in the community. Um, so all of this conversation and dialogue, I think, is great, and and I'm just uh, fully supportive of everything that's being discussed right now, um, and and that that's really all I have to say. So thank you for your time, um, and and I look forward to meeting and, and working with all all of you moving down the line. Great, thank you so much for uh, participating this evening. Um, let's see, is there anybody else with a hand up? Um, I know that Marcos wanted to make a, a few final comments. Um, go ahead, Marcos. Yeah, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, so remember the sound on, on your microphone is not the best, so um, either, yeah. uh, there you go. <laughs> you're all, all going to see my nostrils now. Um, yeah, so a few clarifying comments. Uh, uh, thank you to, to Morris for, for providing that, that information. Uh, I do want to apologize. I didn't want. I didn't mean to paint a, a particular like value judgment on the industry by comparing it to Amazon. Definitely not in terms of market dominance or size. What I meant was specifically in terms of land use, in that a product is warehoused on site. In this case, marijuana, because I wanted to differentiate between a, a, a delivery service that has marijuana on site and therefore in the uh, uh, precedent of the ordinance, then it would be subject to a special permit versus a delivery function that only touches marijuana at, at a location that's already permitted. And so I thought it's, it's important to make the distinction in order to not have to permit these smaller companies that will only come into contact with marijuana at an already permitted site. Uh, and those smaller companies that would likely allow for more equity participation um, it could be established anywhere, whether it's a storefront or another commercial space in the city, they're not bringing marijuana into those neighborhoods, into those, it, it, into those locations. The other thing I, I neglected to say at the beginning uh, and address specifically the order on BR, I would severely caution, and I would tell you, I, I, I would, my personal opinion is, please do not allow this in the DR zone. And the reason is, that I, and I fully favor allowing this more in the commercial zones, the issue is, as, as I said in the beginning, there is so much money in the cannabis industry. It has the ability to dis then displace residents. I, I would severely caution that. Do, do not displace residential zones with cannabis because it could, not that it would necessarily flood it, but there's really no reason to start at the DR. You know, uh, there's, there's other zones that where you can start in downtown business, certainly BH, BG, uh, or even do an, an overlay if you want to be even more targeted. If you if if you want to go through different zones, but just say like yeah, this corridor of High Street or this particular corridor of Ingleside, that could, you could also do that. Thank you for that clarification. Um, okay, so I think we're at a point where we um, need to make a decision as to um, whether we're um, keeping the public hearing open open or if we're closing. Um, I'm getting recommendations from um, planning board. Um, can I hear from committee members as to what what the uh, the sense of things are related to? Uh, um, you know, I think there's a way to even close the public hearing on on some of the items. Uh, you know, perhaps like closing the public hearing on items 10, 11, and 12. Um, 
you know, makes make sense given that um, they, they will likely be given to withdraw. I just wanted to hear from committee members what where the uh, thoughts are. Um, Councilor Murphy. Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and thanks to everybody that has offered thoughts and comments, and I appreciate it. And Damaris, I appreciate your nice comment, and uh, and, and I do appreciate uh, the support you gave me, so thank you very much. Uh, I would just suggest, unless we know we want to eventually not act on some of these, I would suggest that we keep the public hearing open, and that, and I would also ask, and I know Marcos, you've got a few things going on and you're getting ready to take a, a I don't know how long a sabbatical, but a sabbatical. Uh, but I think if we could get these in, and I know, you know, I'm not a techie as you all know. So, I mean, I know Jeffrey's been trying to send me stuff and we haven't figured out how to get it to me yet. Uh, but uh, if you could send that, uh, what you did there in terms of your suggestions, uh, if you could also send uh, specifically in terms of uh, a zoning map where you think, where you would recommend at this point, uh, specifically in terms of the zone and, and, and where it is in the city. Uh, I would appreciate that. Uh, and I do think, I mean, I'm fascinated by this delivery versus retail and, I, and how they're going to cooperate. I, I think, you know, I've, I've had the concern that maybe we end up with too many too many retails eventually, and then I'm concerned about keeping everybody going. Uh, and I was originally under the impression that the retail would also be the delivery, but I don't think that's what's happening. And I'm not, again, I'm not sure. But I would say keep the rest of it open. Uh, other than the ones, if we know we're not going to do it, and if it's everybody's okay with closing it on certain ones, but I think for the ones that we're discussing that have impact on other things that. Uh, Commissioner Kelly talked about, I would say we leave the public hearing open. Thank you. Uh, anyone else have, have thoughts from the committee? Um, I would I would make a motion then that we continue the public hearing. Um, or perhaps it's perhaps it makes more sense to um, close the public hearing on um, items 10, 11, and 12, um, and then uh, Put them on our next agenda, or we could actually give them leave to withdraw following this. I think, um, in terms of procedure, um, following the the joint hearing, we, we would be able to um, dispose of them. Um, but then keeping the hearing open on um, three through nine, excepting five. Okay, I'll, I'll make that. I'll I'll second that motion. Um, the motion has been made and seconded to the continue the public hearing on items number three through five on our agenda this evening, accepting item number five. No, no, no. Three, three, four, six, seven, and eight, right? We're not doing five. Yes, and that's why I'm saying uh, accepting. So leaving out item number five, um, three, three through uh, nine. Okay, okay. I didn't, I didn't hear the accepting. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, we need a date certain to continue the hearing to, so it looks like we would be looking to um, January. And um, I don't know who keeps the calendar for the planning board. Um, I would, but does it look like the um, 14th or the 28th would be available? No, we don't meet on those days. Our January dates are Tuesday the 26th. 12th. 1226 so far. Great. Right. Oh, I'm looking at January 2020. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> um, so the 5th and the 19th? No, the 12th the and the 26th. 12th. I'm sorry. Yes, I see it now. Right. And right now our, our 12th is busy. Yeah, so we've got, we got a full calendar on the 12th. Um, 26 is doable, I think, at this point. Well, the only thing for the 26th is we may have a continuation from the 12th, plus we mm -hmm. also, well, 26 is certainly less less uh, impacted than the 12th. The 12th would not right. be doable. So let's um, let's move ahead to the to February, and hopefully at that next February meeting, we could have some more um, concrete proposals. I think we had a really good um, broad overview discussion here this evening. Um, and then perhaps by our first meeting in um, February, we could get specific recommendations. 
That would be so February 9th or the 23rd. Yeah. I, I think I think February 9th. Yeah. Okay. I think it'd be good to not delay this more than is absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. um, so on the um, motion that Councilor Murphy made to continue, we're looking at uh, February 9th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 That's four. Uh, I'm going to just say it's four to zero for continuing. Um, and then can I get a second um, motion to close the public hearings on 10, 11, and 12? Second that. Motion has been made and seconded to close the public hearings on 10, 11, and 12. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, so move. That looks like another four to zero vote. Um, I'm just not seeing one, so you know, excuse me, Juan, if I'm not catching you in this vote here. Okay, so we have um, taken care of our items. Um, Mr. Kelly, if you want to take votes. Um, I'd say a motion to continue our public hearing to February 9th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. So moved. Your second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay, thank you. Councillor Lisi? Yes, Councillor Vacan. Um, can um, Marco send the documents that he's sending to committee to the full council also, please? Marcos, did you catch that? Uh, yeah, so I, I copied Jeffrey if he wants to send it, or I, I mean, I can just forward to the remaining councillors. I sent so it to all the councillors here. You sent it to here. our administrative assistant, Jeffrey? I, I sent it, yeah, I sent it to the full slate of uh, ordinance uh, counselors, the other counselors who are here who are not on ordinance, uh, Joe and, 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 and Jimmy uh, and, and Jeffrey, but I, I, I could forward it, sure. Thank you, Marcos. Thank you. Mar Marcos, could you also forward it to myself so that I can just hit forward to my planning board? You're, you're <laughs> copy to Sharon, you and Jeff. Oh, just and, and just you making know. sure. Um, you keep it straight all the time, I'll tell you. <laughs> Thank okay, you so that. for um, any members of the public who are curious about the, the process here, we're continuing the public hearing. We're looking to meet again on February 9th. Um, hopefully at that point in time, we'll have specific recommendations to consider and discuss, and uh, the public will be allowed again to comment on any of those uh, proposals that, that are made at that point in time. Uh, I do see a, a hand up from Councillor McGivern. Just uh, procedural, uh, Chairman Lacey, on 10, 11, and 12, I realize you're closing the public hearing in the intention, but we can't vote on those until the, pub, until the planning board gives us a recommendation. Um, okay, so then would uh, the planning board also want to close the um, public hearings on those last three items and send us a recommendation? Uh, what we have on our agenda is just a marijuana related item. We don't specifically call it anything in particular. Yeah, I, I just could point that out. We just have a public hearing related to marijuana in, um, you know, it says pertaining to deliveries, buffer zone, and hours. And it was just the way it was helpful if we could get a list of your item numbers and what specific orders they pertain to, because we don't have that. And you Looks may have like seen Sharon it. has it. Okay, Sharon does have it. Yep. I'll I'll forward. I'll make sure that is that. Are you pulling that off of the um, website, Sharon, and the, the posted po document, the posted agenda? Uh, that is the email that you had sent me that has it all listed. Yes. Yep. Um, okay, so I guess they'll just be waiting in the jacket until we um, get the full recommendation from the planning board, and, and I think that's fine. It'll just take up less space on our next, next uh, agenda. That's fine. Thank you for clarifying uh, pr the procedure, Councillor McGivern. Okay, I think that um, we have okay. taken care of business here for the evening. Um, is there a motion? Well, we've already um, continued our hearing. So I think that from the planning board's point of view, we're done here and can go away and reconvene our meeting. That's the Correct. plan. <laughs> right. Okay. We'll see you next year, folks. So long. Have, have a good, good uh, Have a wonderful holidays. Year. Thank you.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Um, and I'll make a motion that the Ordinance Committee adjourn. So I have one, la one last procedural question. Um, because item number five got on the agenda incorrectly, do we need to do anything to it or if we just leave it um, on the table without addressing it? Is it still in the jacket? Um, Councilor McGivern, I think I'm looking to you at this point for just some guidance. Well, it remains in the jacket no matter what you do tonight. Because you, okay. you know, you, it was referred there by the full city council, so you can just do what you want. The next next agenda. Okay, great. I just wanted to make sure we didn't have to act on it in some way. That's that's good. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn then. So moved. Uh, motion has been made. I'll I'll make the second that we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, thanks Thank everyone for participating this evening. Um, hopefully we'll have some more recommendations to work off of next time. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. Thanks. Have a good Thank night. Thank you. Hey, good everybody. Morning.